Hello and welcome to the REO Bank Owned Real Estate Investing Training. What we're going to go through right now are the benefits of REO and bank owned properties and really more than anything else explaining what they are. I've got my good friend and my business partner Bob on. So Bob, I'll let you jump right in and can you just explain to the listener what exactly an REO actually is? Absolutely, Darius. You know, and I, I invest in REOs, but I'm also a former banker, a mortgage banker as a matter of fact, and my bank had REOs. All REO stands for is real estate owned. And what happens is when a, a borrower goes into default on their mortgage and stops making the payments, the lender has the right to take back the property. It's either called a mortgage or a deed of trust. It's a lien against the property. And that's the document that allows them to foreclose, which is the act of taking back the property. Now, a property goes to sale because the bank says, great, I'm going to auction off the property. We want to get our money back. And nobody bids, or the bank says, you know what, we need $150,000 to cover our costs, and no one bids 150. dollars Guess what? The property then goes back to the bank, and the bank now owns the property. So when a bank owns the property, it happens after the foreclosure sale. The foreclosure's done, the people living in the property, they're gone, and now the bank owns a vacant property. That's the foreclosed property. That's the REO. And boy, oh boy, are they motivated to get rid of them. That's great. And that's exactly, uh, that's probably the, the best explanation I've ever heard of what an REO is. A lot of times people overcomplicate it, but it's when the bank has taken the property back. It's the post-foreclosure stage. The bank has already foreclosed. They've won the property back at auction. They added their inventory, and they're motivated to get rid of it as soon as possible. So, Bob, um, obviously, you know, if these banks were taking back these properties, we know that they've been doing this at record rates over the last few years. What are some of the benefits of being able to get an REO? Well, the benefits are, are pretty simple. I mean, because the banks have so many, they're motivated to get them off the books because the regulators are coming down and going, look, you've got this bad asset. So in many situations, you can get REOs at really great prices. And it depends on the marketplace. You know, some marketplaces like Southern California, they might have to pay, you know, 90 cents in the dollar. But other places, like places in Indiana, I know you can get an REO property anywhere from 35 to 65 cents in the dollar, depending on the fix-up that's needed for the property. So killer, killer discounts and the fact that you've got a motivated seller. We all know creative real estate is all about seller's motivation. And in this case, you've got a seller who wants to get rid of the property. And you don't have to worry about somebody losing their house because they already did. You're dealing with a person who's at a bank making a decision, a business decision they make every single day. So you're not going to insult them by offering something a little bit lower. You don't have to worry about them having to stay in their house. It's an asset. They don't want it. Let's start negotiating and see if you can get a good price. Exactly. And a big thing, too, to understand is that the banks are motivated to get rid of these properties because, number one, the more properties they have at their REOs, the harder it is for them to be able to access credit lines to lend out to the general public, and which is how banks actually really make their money. It's called arbitrage. A big thing, too, is when the bank has taken the property back, it's not making them any money. It's just sitting on their books, collecting dust. They're extremely motivated to move the property. Another big thing, too, and a question that we hear all the time, Bob, is are the REO plays still viable? So what's your take on that? You know, I think that there are, and the reason I, we even ask this question that you see on the slide here in front of you is, is really simple. There's a lot of big players that have been sitting on the sidelines since this whole meltdown occurred, and they've got a lot of money, and they're thinking, how do we get back in the game? And so what happens is we see a lot of them stepping in literally with 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars at a whack, um, and big players meaning real estate investment trusts and, and hedge funds, you know, some of the bigger guys, some of the bigger companies. And they're buying thirty, forty, fifty million dollars worth of property at a whack. So, you know, a lot of folks are like, ooh, well, you know, if they're gonna do all that, we can't compete with that. Well, of course you can't. But the bottom line is is that banks still need to get rid of properties because of restrictions put on them by the regulators. And so I think REO plays are extremely viable, and not only REOs from traditional lenders, but REOs from where the school taxes have foreclosed, and the school district now owns the property, or a city has foreclosed for back taxes, and the city owns the property. There's a lot of different types of REOs that I think are extremely viable. In fact, my business uh, up in Indianapolis is based strictly on REOs.
Wow. And, and Bob, I know one big thing is we're seeing this trend, and really it's just kind of the way it's always been with REOs, but local markets are creating a supply and demand. Can you kind of explain what that means a little bit further? Yeah, what happens is just that, you know, everybody and their dog wants a property in Southern California on the beach. Well, because the demand is so high, banks go, okay, well, great. Everybody wants our property, so we're going to get top dollar for them. On the other hand, you might have a place in Indianapolis or you might have a place in Detroit or, you know, wherever. I'm just making, you know, I'm just picking cities at random. Um, you know, not everybody wants a property there. Well, now the bank's got a glut of those properties and they want to get rid of them. So the price that you're going to pay on REOs really depends on the local markets because the local markets create supply and demand based on the viability of the market and how much people want to invest there. Great. And and some of the things that you're going to want to take note of when you're looking at an REO or bank-owned property, and just so you know, it's all this the same thing. You may hear bank-owned, you might hear REO, it's the same thing, is the condition of the property. You know, a lot of these properties, um, we had, uh, you know, troubled homeowners that owned them before, they might have destroyed the property. Properties might have been vacant for a while. They might need a little bit of TLC, right? They might need to be rehabbed and fixed up. So you're going to want to take a look at them. Sometimes it's difficult to actually get into the property, but that all depends on the bank you're dealing with, the rep you're dealing with, or the realtor you're dealing with. A big thing, too, is local area, right? REOs will work and, and, and be accessed different ways in different markets, so you're going to want to pay attention to that. And trends can differ from one zip code to another that are right beside each other. So you definitely need to understand how to do your research there. And the big thing, too, when looking at an REO is figuring out what your end game is or your exit strategy. You can basically get the REO, flip it to other investors, sometimes cash investors, sometimes people securing financing. You can get the property, and you can obviously hold on to it yourself and obviously add it to your portfolio. Or you can get the property, rehab it yourself, and then end up selling it off to a person who will end up paying retail for it, who most likely will end up living in the property, and that's where you'll get the most bang for your buck. Again, understanding different strategies will help you be able to determine what your end game or your exit strategy should be. So with all that being said, I understand that you probably have more questions about REOs and bank-owned properties, and I'm sure you found great value in this little short training video, but we've got a lot more for you. It's a program that Bob, myself, and our other partners have put together called REAP. First off, it's 100% free. We're going to give it to you. All you have to do is enter your information in on the right side of the page. REAP stands for Real Estate Action Plan. These are the specific things that we have done to build successful, lucrative, profitable, and thriving businesses within different fields within real estate. It's a 30-day training program where every other day you'll get an email that will give you action steps, things that have to do with marketing, analysis, um, being able to locate properties and transactions, being able to determine different niches and different trenches, being able to figure out opportunities and markets that might not be in your local area, putting together your team, different strategies from short sales to REO to wholesale to rehab to private money, how to get the money for your deals, how to actually form your business like a real business that actually works from a working model that Bob, myself, and our partners have created and have been using for years. Additionally, if you go ahead and you act now, we're going to give you a video. You'll be taken to a video instantly that goes through the four pillars of success. We also delve into a lot of the market, uh, the opportunities in the market that people aren't speaking about yet. We're going to go into detail about a market report that people have been talking about since we created it. And the big thing is the only people that have seen are people that have actually opted in and got to the other side of the page. So we're giving that to you for free. Just put your information on the right-hand side or down below at the end of the training. Either spot will get you there. Thank you so much for being part of this training. We look forward to seeing you at the training video over on the other side. Thank you and take care. All right. So the next one, I have to tell you, you're going to have to, if you've got your PowerPoint up, actually put it in slideshow mode. And after you get off of Fast Forward Advisors, the first one where it says Rehab, and it's in slideshow mode, um, if you page down Rehabbing Real Estate, the first thing you see is a picture of Charlie Sheen. 
Oh, yeah. The reason you see that is because when I put in, like I was always pulling pictures off the Internet, 